Good morning, happy Saturday, 23rd of July, where has this month gone, where has this year gone? I hope you're alright and I hope you've had um, a decent week and tried to stay out of the heat as much as possible. It's lovely to have your company today and um, let's get some bird sung on in a second so we can feel the Although it should it should be seagulls. I haven't got a recording of seagulls, unfortunately. And it might get a little bit annoying. So we'll put our bird song on like normal. So if you're watching for the first time, welcome. If you'd like to say hello, if you've worked out how to comment um, and say where you're from, that would be absolutely wonderful. Good morning, Trish. How lovely to see you uh, vi vi digitally. Thank you for joining. The weather, I presume, where you are is going to be similar to where we are because you're not that many miles away, are you? So I am on my own in the shop. It's been a little bit busy this morning, which is quite nice and, and, and unusual. Um, so if I do have to uh, go and serve, I will have to abandon you. Um, trying to find where my little note is that says I'm just serving downstairs. Just in case I need it. Oh, I found it. So I'll give you oh, just 13 for dinner so far, 13 of you live with me, that's lovely. Now I know most of you may or may not be able to um, comment and that is fine. I'll try and talk you through it as much as possible. So this is Barmouth Harbour, my second home really. Um, I paint a lot of Barmouth, around, especially around this time of year because it's where I'm, when I go. And I actually took this last Friday afternoon. Uh, last Friday evening, about nine o'clock, I was standing on the harbour and uh, I thought, you know what, let's take a lovely photo and then, because I knew I was going to do this class. So I will give you a few minutes to sketch. I, I did post the outline last night and um, again this morning. Um, the colours are along the top of the screen. They are also within the body of this image and on our website, depending on where you're watching live from. We haven't had much rain, have we? We had a bit of a drizzle yesterday morning, but not, not really enough to break the, the weather, have we? I tell you, you, you know the classroom, Trish. Um, during the heat wave, the Monday and Tuesday, we cancelled all of our classes because it would be impossible to paint in 36 degree heat. However, Wednesday and Thursday, and hi, hi Mandy, um, Wednesday, and, Wednesday and Thursday this week and yesterday and a little bit today, the classroom has re retained the heat unusually and I cannot call it down with windows, doors open, fans on. It's still really warm in here, um, to the point that the projector overheated um, on Wednesday and uh, caused me a few issues during the class, but never mind. So, uh, colour-wise, because uh, it's acrylics, we've got black and white, uh, cadmium red, cerulean blue. So there's our white. Ultra, uh, cerulean blue, ultramarine, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, cadmium red and black. I'm just going to fiddle with the camera for a second because the colours don't look very nice and they don't really look like what what they're supposed to do. So let me just lean a little bit. So you may not see much going on. I don't know if it changes. Oh, 
That cadmium red just doesn't look much like cadmium red. Well, let's see. Right, I have got a customer, so it will give you a few seconds to sketch out. And I'll be back in a second. Let me just pop this here in the sky so people can see. I'll be as quick as I can. This is the only issue about trying to do everything at once on your own. I won't be long. Talk amongst yourselves.
back. That should have given you long enough to sketch. Good morning, Leslie. Sunny Swindon. Hello, Diane. Sunny. Oh, you're commenting, Diane. Excellent. Well done. Right, so I'll run through those colours again. Oh, it's a good sale, so I'm glad I didn't ignore them. Um, white, cerulean, ultramarine, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, cadmium red and black. As I say, I took this photograph last Friday evening. Um, when I, I literally just pulled up and then booked into the B&B, &B, which is just a bit further up from the harbour, and uh, had a quick wander around. And the sunset was so glorious, I thought, Do you know what? I need to paint this. I just need to paint it. Right, so I'm going with uh, a one-inch flat brush. And I'm just going to wet it because it hasn't been used for a while. And that just prepares the bristles a little bit. And then I will scoop up a dollop of white. Now, I'll probably lose my masts a little bit at this point, but that's okay. Now, it depends where you're working that this might dry rather, rather fast. So there's enough water on the brush to help the paint move but not too much to cause bubbles. If it's forming bubbles, it's too wet. Really, the water's there just to make the paint slick, like me. Right, I'm not gonna clean my brush, and I'm going into the corner of it with literally a pinhead of yellow ochre. Mix with the white. And go across the sky so as I say this is my second home I know it extremely well in fact even though I've been going there for since I was a child so we're looking at nearly 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 40 years I've been going there I know I probably only sound like I'm 21 but you know just the way it is So again, I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm going to scoop up a little bit of the cerulean. Just a little bit. Leave a slightly bigger gap. Above the ochre. Cerulean's very punchy, so we don't want too much in that. And then we can bring it down, you see, into... Or towards... the ochre because we don't really want green if we can help it so that's why the ochre fades up and the blue fades down and then we meet in the middle if you do have any questions ask i may not see them straight away but i will endeavor to answer them so that's just a bit more cerulean at the top and then i'm going to add a tiny bit of ultramarine at the very top so I add it in blobs because then it helps distribute it a little bit more evenly it's funny the colors of this picture would make me think of an early morning rather than an early evening but because I was there and I took it I know that it's definitely evening so I want to try and soften the lines so I'm tickling it a little to smooth it all out left to right I might have to chop a bit of my palette off because it's a bit bigger than my paint my, than I, my surface and it's getting in the way so let me let me do a bit of uh, blue Peter construction oh that's better Let's chop it off and then I've got another bit I can stick here then. Perfect. And I am actually going to... Am I? No. Do you know what? I'm going to pop my dirty brush with a bit more white. And fill the sea while I've got it on the brush. Because it's all going to be a similar colour anyway. So I'm just going into the white. If it feels sticky, 
add a bit of water but just enough again you don't want bubbles and this is almost just to use up the paint on my brush and I have to be aware that we only have an hour and a half and we've already lost half an hour not lost because we've been using it drawing out and stuff we can add lighter tones and darker tones later but this is just to clear my brush so I will wash it now oh do you know I've just splatted a bit of water on there if I try and lift that up I will have a perfect circle of white so I need that to just dry by itself I think Let it dry for a, a, a few seconds. And as always, it's so lovely to have your company. Um, we are, I say we, I, <laughs> I am currently making changes to the online art shop, not the classes and not art stream, but the online art shop. So if you look on our website on the online shop, there will be things missing. It's just that, that we've got thousands of products and I'm having to input them all by hand again because there's been a, a slight change. But hopefully it will make it much easier for you to shop and browse and pay by PayPal, um, which is everybody's, in business terms, preferred method because uh, it's a safe and easy transaction. So I have got about a third of the way on there. So if you want to look at the online shop, at any point you can also you may notice on our website um, on the front page on the home page we've got um, a little a little tab that floats on the screen on the left hand side a little black tab with a heart that says support us now that is for anybody that doesn't want any art materials and that only can afford to join in our free classes and our free demos uh, that links you if you click on that little floating support us tab it links you to my Kofi or coffee page um, and it enables you just to pay for a cup of coffee so it you can just it pays three pounds from PayPal and that's um, an instant way to support us if you want to um, if I'm honest we really need the support at the moment things are not easy um, at all uh, not just for me but uh, the whole of independent retail is uh, is struggling so we do appreciate your support so if you appreciate all the free things that I do for you um, and you want to bung us a couple of quid, three quid, three quid, go on to the home page of our website and um, click the support us tab on the bottom left and uh, it will allow us, allow you to pay three pounds. Um, if you can't afford it, don't worry. I know it's difficult for everybody. Um, I know how hard it is. All right, now that should be dry enough for me to get a smaller brush. A, flat, a small flat or a filbert is what we're after. We don't want a round brush. That might do. That might be too small. Um, and I'm going with some white and a tiny bit of yellow ochre. Just to turn it more of a cream. I don't want yellow ochre. Um, but incidentally, when you add white and yellow ochre, you make Naples yellow deep. or how some companies make Naples yellow deep. They use yellow ochre and white, and Naples yellow light is cadmium yellow and white. And then I'm gonna sort of roll the brush around between my finger and thumb to create the sunlit clouds. Now, Barmouth Harbour's cloud is, is quite iconic because it always falls in sort of like a radial pattern. 
Um, we did a pastel class at Barmouth Harbour and it was, you know, spiralled out. It was beautiful. Jackie, Jackie did the pastel class with me on Thursday last week and uh, she did a beautiful, beautiful job. You can add a bit of white if it doesn't show up. So the reason why I say use a flat or filbert brush rather than a round brush, nobody's asking me, but you might have thought it and you might be too scared or don't know how to type it. So I'll tell you. A round brush has got a very pointy end. So when you try to do this with a very pointy end, you just get lots and lots of triangles, which don't look very natural. Not for a cloud. Whereas a flat brush or a round brush if you use a flat brush let me just show you a flat brush I know you know what one looks like but when you're using this corner and you roll it around you're actually making a curve rather than a point and that curve is perfect for clouds I'm aware we only have an hour and a half and you might think oh blimey Barry that's a lot of picture and, and you know, you're right. It is. And I'll try and make it as nice and easy to follow as I can. When your brush runs out, it's really cool because you can get really soft. Soft effect. Now there, I'm going to have to turn that into a cloud because that is where that splot was of water. Can you see how it's nice and subtle? just like I am if you have questions please please as long as it's art related I can't tell you about the economy I can't tell you about cars well, it's unusual to have uh, sirens coming up the street I hope whoever it is is okay Something like that. Just keep it keep it soft and keep it subtle. The the darker mountains that we'll put on will make it glow more. And I'm not going to clean my brush. And I'm going to pull out a bit of that sky colour that the cloud colour that we've used and add a bit of ultramarine and a tiny touch of cadmium red. If it feels sticky, add a touch of water. Not too much though. So I'm making a sort of purpley colour. Let's add a little bit more white in there. And we've got a few clouds coming across the bay in this direction but I've not got a lot of paint on my brush I've deliberately got a smaller brush to try and give sort of more hazier tones and these can go off behind the mountains a little Kind of like that. It's quite effective, isn't it? I do, I have to say, I take my hats off to any of you that do these painting live, live with me. Um, those of you that watch, I think you've got the best, um, watch now, paint later, I think you have the best deal. Because trying to keep up with me and listen to my waffle and do a painting, um, I think is, is, admirable at least admirable yes but I just love your company I know there's quite a few that can't join live today I mean it is Saturday and in summer we have another free painting class in August towards the end of August because I don't do our normal paid master classes over summer because it's always quiet. On the 27th of August at 11 o'clock, it's a watercolour free paint along class, and that is a poppy field in watercolour. So that may actually be quite nice, do a bit of spattering 
lots of cadmium reds and cadmium yellows in that one so uh, 27th of August 11 o'clock same time same place uh, a free paint along poppy field but in between then on the 6th of August I've got a free demo at 11 o'clock which is also watercolours and that's uh, how to paint shadows a sea and beach view in watercolour now interestingly while I was in uh, on the beach uh, last weekend there was some really strong shadows and hopefully I took some photographs of them and that would be really useful wouldn't it for that class right what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strengthen this purple with a bit more blue a bit more red and a bit more ochre and that is going to form the basis of this misty hill here still using my cloud brush I haven't cleaned it I'm terrible aren't I what a terror I am and if I add a bit more blue so that's more more of the all of this color so more ultramarine more red more ochre in there and then this is a bit more ultramarine on top round here because things are more blue the further away they are they're cooler cooler tones and bluer tones it's all to do with short wave and long wave light which is very scientific but very interesting so I'm just going to spread that up and across because we're going to darken these things I might use a little bit of that just on the top there I'm just dancing the brush there's hardly any texture in this at all it's very flat if you could look at it from the side from like if you put your nose on the on my drawing board and looked across there's hardly any texture I, I keep it all nice and flat because if I do have any texture I want it here so we're half an hour in An hour to go. Da, da, da. Hopefully you're enjoying it. That's the main thing if you enjoy it. So what I want to do is add a bit more blue and a little bit of yellow ochre. So I'll get a bit more of a green tint. And I'll blob some of this here. Now whether we'll be able to paint Barmouth Bridge, which is right on the um, horizon line, I don't know not that I don't think you can but it will require a really thin brush and a steady hand but you could do it in pen perhaps so I'm just playing around with tones of yellow ochre and blue I've gone over me see oh, that's me fiddling Although I'm not really using the best brush to do thin lines with, I don't know. Let me dilute it a little bit. So where you want a decent edge, add a bit more water. A little bit of white there, and then I'm going to make a real dark green from a lot of blue and a bit of yellow ochre 
and that's going to really help push forward, bring back, and or bring forward, push back. That's what I mean. Ultramarine's our best friend when we're doing foliage and stuff. Blobby, blobby, blobby. Dabby, dabby, dabby. Just gives us interesting texture because we don't want to put too much information here because it's far away. And uh, if we put too much in, it means that we've got to do a lot more detail in the foreground. Hello, Anne Borada. Should he? Do we wed the blino with you? But I'm cracking on. Right. Now I've just had a look and I'm noticing that a lot of my shapes are exactly the same size and pattern. I need to break it up a little. Something like that will do. And then I'm going to do the same, the same colours to start with over here. So that's a lot of ultramarine and a little bit of yellow ochre. I don't want to scare you too much. I like to scare you a little bit, but not too much. Good, I am glad you are well. Are you fully moved now? Again, if it feels sticky, enough moisture on the brush to help the paint move. We will be simplifying. I mean, I've got rid of a lot of boats. They've all gone off out. Might add a tiny bit of black. I climbed up this the other day. Most beautiful views right at the top. Um, which one did I climb? I climbed that one. Did I? No, I think it was up here. Um, National Trust benches at the top. Really lovely. Beautiful views of the harbour, although it was extremely busy. I haven't seen it that busy for a long time. Well, that's a little bit greener there, so I need a bit more ochre. Because it's a bit of a... Grassy bank. Sometimes there's little rabbits on that in the evening. It's very rocky. Right. Let me give that a bit of a clean... a bit of a wipe so how is your painting looking as messy as this I'm sure it'll look beautiful though I'll need to find a really faffy fiddly brush these brushes I had are the J car pack of 10 for seven quid and I've had them for nearly th two and a half three years So they're starting to, I've, I've cleaned them with hand sanitizer to keep them going and washing up liquid. Um, and it's given them a bit more life. But I think the time will soon come where I've got to say goodbye to some of these brushes.
Right. We need to press on a little. So I've still got some of, I'm gonna use my thin, this is kind of like a half rigger or a half liner brush. It's, it's small and detailed. Um, but the color I use for the clouds is actually the color I'm gonna use for this building. As it's a white building that's um, bathed in the evening sunlight. I'll put the windows in later. Now behind it is a blue house, a very icy blue. So I'm just going to add a bit of uh, ultramarine and white to my colour. This is all the faffy stuff you see. This is the if if you're not great at um, having patience these faffy bits can really wind you up I've just spotted I've drawn another pale beige house here I think that's the lobster shack there I put I will put details in and then if I add a bit of burnt sienna and a bit more yellow ochre so this is quite fluid. I'll have enough for this uh, this building, which is a cafe. Really busy one. Right on the harbour. And a little house right on the edge by the bridge it's actually a little bit further back it's, it is on the bridge a little lighter tone there I mean there are lots of houses and stuff up this um, section but I don't want to make it too complicated because it's so far away I'll do a little bit of cerulean and black and white quite runny and that might give me um, a few windows especially in this building and they're just going to be a brush width I think there's a balcony or something along there I don't want again I don't want to do too much we've got to put a bit of a wall going along here although there isn't really much of one on this bit I should have filled that in with a bit more of uh, my ochre tones there but there is a bit of a wall even when the tides in right, I'm gonna stop for a second what we did oh gosh 22 <sighs> can we do this can we do this? I have faith in us. It's a nice day today, isn't it? This is this is the maximum hotness for a ginger like me. About 23 in a breeze, that's good. Anything else in it? Ooh, no thanks. Right, while you're doing that, I'm going to use my little thin brush and mix black and white together to make, make a sort of grey colour. Not a sort of grey colour, it is a grey colour. Barry, what are you on about? Black and white make grey. Not sort of grey, grey. Want this a little bit fluid because we've got a thin line right here. 
tempe iya and a bit here and I can use some of this to create a bit of rocky texture beautiful plants at the moment all up there So if you if you if you're wondering if you've been to Barmouth and you can't work out where this is, this is the harbour on the um, the Fairbourne side. So Fairbourne is just over here. Dolgechlai is further up uh, the Mulvac Estuary, and Harlech is um, up that way. And if you keep going up that way, you'll end up with uh, sort of like Port Maddox and Port Merion and all of those places. So Fairbourne directly to the right. Well, actually, this is Arthog. Fairbourne is off the page on the right-hand side. Fairbourne and Vriog. Where I was climbing waterfalls in Arthog, pretending I was 19 again. And I found out I wasn't 19. Um, I managed to do a whole mountain of waterfalls in half an hour and up and down, which was quite an achievement. I did 15,000 steps on that day. Um, right, that's the background, really. Um, if you wanted to put Barmouth Bridge in, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to do it in black. Right the way across. about here it gets a bit wider and then it we get two arches but that's that is irrelevant really and then you could maybe use a gel pen to touch it up a little when it totally dries. Right. We must move forth and press on. So we'll go with a really dark green again. We could have done this while I'd got the dark green on my brush. Ugh, what a wally. So the blue, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. And we want to just create um, broken lines. Do you know, there's an extra bit on here that I haven't put on yet. I'll do that later. So keep it quite linear. but also, crucially, horizontal. Because this is a harbour, not a waterfall. And harbours generally have smooth, calm water. So if you can keep it sort of left to right a little bit. And then keep it horizontal as much as you can. I've just been given a nice kind of coke that'll cool me down quite a lot thank you don't want to lose all of the the darks or the lights you, you, you want to get a good mix This is a very runny mix of paint. It forms more of a stripe. Now I think the tide was coming in at this moment. 
but I can't really remember. I know it was last Friday. But once you've been there for a few days, the tide comes in and out a lot. Because that's what it does. It's the sea. This is, is very shallow water here. Very shallow. Um, because this boat hasn't actually uh, fully uh, submerged. It's still on its... I'm going to call it fins, but it's probably not a fin. But they look like fins. The B&B I stayed in was further up the hill, round about, round about there. And it's called Lorraine Lodge. A wonderful couple. They've recently took over and purchased the uh, the bed and breakfast. Treated me wonderfully. Couldn't fault it. Lorraine Lodge. They actually took the uh, the bed and breakfast on. They bought it in March 2020, and you can imagine, within weeks, they then had to close. How awful! I'll add a little bit of black just to make it a little bit darker. Thin lines. I will put some creamy colours back on. We'll need a good 15 minutes on this foreground. If you're looking for a little bed and breakfast, I recommend Lorraine Lodge. They're still working on it from when they took it over. Um, something like that. I'll be using this little fiddly brush quite a bit. Let me just open my drink just away from the microphone well it's taking shape isn't it and it will transform once the boats are in and the beach is on um, I prefer to work from the top down and from the back forward and the ground up just because I'm a leaner. I don't paint on easels unless I'm doing really large pieces. Um, and if I painted this now, um, I, don't, I don't want a hairdryer on in this weather. So um, I'd end up getting covered all up my arm. How are yours going, those of you that are painting along with me? I hope you're doing all right. I mean, during lockdown, we used to have a couple of hundred of you joining in, but obviously everybody's lives have gone back to normal now, so um, I'm happy to have uh, the select few joining live and those of you that are joining later. I look forward to seeing what you've done. When I finish this, I will post it on the shop page. And um, if you'd like to post in the comments of that what you've done I really do love seeing what you've created I won't give you necessarily a critique on it unless you ask for it because you know I will only critique when asked because sometimes you might be really proud of something and then I'll come along and go oh gosh that's no you need more of this or less of that so I'm just going to mix up a bit more of that cream color from the yellow ochre and white because there's a few little lines. I love reflection because it's nothing at all to do with what you can see. At all. Especially moving water. And because it's moving, look how long 
that building is reflected. It's crazy. Now, while I've still got this yellow ochre and white colour, I'm going to paint my boat. I think it's too yellow ochre. Mm. In fact, interestingly, it's slightly ultramarine in the shade because it's a white boat. Macaire. The reflection of the boat doesn't really have much bearing on the shape of the boat either. So never be frightened when it comes to reflection because it makes absolutely no difference. On moving water anything goes now I can tell you I haven't put enough darks in this because there's not enough contrast there so I will put some more in once I've oh do you know while I've got this light colour the white and the ochre I'm going to do a few lighter streaks in the water just a few You're very quiet. You probably can't type. You see, I've got the ability. I've got a microphone, so I, <laughs> I forget. I've got a microphone, so I can talk and paint. You've you've got a, a keyboard or a phone or a iPad, and you have to type when you want to talk. Gives it that little bit, bit of a glow. Like that. And actually, if I add a bit more ochre, what was that? What was that? Cut that, that sludgy colour. I can paint the. It's not really a beach. It's um, steps and a and a ramp. Interesting that that this building isn't really. reflected but I'm gonna have to mix up some more of that color and reflect it because it looks really really odd not in the water actually that really sludgy color is going to be useful because there is a ramp No, that's the lobster pot. The, the cafe is off the picture. I do. I've, it's funny, I was only here the other day. And I'm already disoriented. This is on the bend on the road on the way round. There's a lovely little jetty thing that comes out here with a, a, a statue of dolphins, a water fountain of dolphins, although it was empty. But the, the dolphin statue is gorgeous. There was actually a man paddle boarding with his spaniel. The spaniel was at the front of the helm. In charge. It's a bit darker now. I 
Right, for the, the red bit of the boat, I'm actually going to mix cadmium red and a little bit of black. Because it's a deeper red. Because it's the evening. Now, there's every chance that I will cheat if I can get this dry. And I'll be using gel, a white gel pen or something. For um, any rigging or sails and things. A little bit dark at that end. I know really we shouldn't outline, but sometimes it works really well. Now I've still got a little bit of grey left from the wall. So I'm going to add a bit more white to that. Because there's a hint of cabin here. And stuff, I don't know. I have no idea anything to do with boats. I, I love Barmouth, but I, I've never been on the boat in Barmouth, so I don't know what half of it is. Um, but it's got a bit of a top. There's some slightly darker bits in there. The railing and stuff, but we're not going to worry too much about anything. Because we've got half an hour left. Ah. Don't panic, we've got all the time in the world. <laughs> Those of you that watch these regularly will hear me say regularly, why do I do this to myself? This is a picture that I probably wouldn't do in two, three, four hours. Um, and yet I'm teaching it you in an hour and a half. I don't listen to myself. There's a bit of red. There's another bit of a boat here. I will use gel pen for the rest of the boats because that's going to make life easier. Now the mast on this boat, I'm going to mix um, all burnt sienna and yellow ochre together. Really, th and maybe a little bit of black. Really thin. And that goes, ooh, to there. Now there's something called counter change. So where the mast Hello Sharon, thank you very much. So where the mast sort of like goes over the lighter, the darker areas, I do it lighter. And where the mast goes over the darker areas, I do it darker. And that is known as counter change. I love it. And it's generally done with trees and masts. Things that are one tone, but it's easier seen. Light against dark. Well, I'm glad you think it's a lovely painting, Sharon, at this stage. Of the, the this is the panic stage of the painting where I realize I've got no time and I've still got all of the beach and the boats and everything but that's where the fun is isn't it allegedly so I will as I say use Uh, 
a, a white gel pen for a lot of these boats and things in a minute. I think I've managed to put the white gel pen and the black liner pens on our website on the, on the new shop. So, um... I don't know whether I think they're under the graph graphic supplies, maybe. I don't know. Right, that that mast is a bit wonky. I should have done it just in pen. Right, now let me get. Oh, I didn't clean that very well. Look at that. Look at the state of this. I've got a shovel. Anyway, we'll go with uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. And a little bit of ultramarine. Or you could use cerulean because that's a bit left out. We haven't used much of that. We want a really weird brownie, biscuity, grey, blue colour. So again, there's enough water on my brush. without forming bubbles. We don't want bubbles. I'll, I'll probably have to get the hairdryer on this so you can see the gel pen bits. But I would advise those of you that are painting along live, don't do the gel pen bits until it's really dry. I have ruined no end of gel pens because I've been impatient. Oh, Roger! Lovely. Do you know, I've painted Barmouth Harbour, let's, let's say a lot over the years, and whenever I've done it, I've done about five, six versions of this. In fact, the rusty boat, the rusty boat is um, just off the edge of the page that I did in the demo uh, at the start of the month. The gouache class. And along here where that little house is in between these two boats, I've always painted a, a, a black tunnel and a bit of sand. And I, I always thought that tunnel was some sort of pipe or tube. But I found out it's, it's the pathway under the railway bridge to get to a mini beach right by the B&B &B that I was staying in. And um, so at nine o'clock on Saturday morning last week, I was having a paddle just up there on a, on my own private beach, it felt like. You can't go too far out there because there's, there's quicksand, so I, I stayed where I knew it was safe. Otherwise you wouldn't have had me back. I'd have been still stuck in some sand in Barmouth. Just need to go a little bit darker under that boat there. I'm glad it's bringing back happy memories for you, Roger. And it's lovely to see you online. And I hope you're well. Right, so I need to make um, sand texture and then we'll put some sa some pebbles on. Oh, and then I'll get the doll pen on. Can we do it? Can we do it? We will. We will. We are doing it. So we've got no choice. Oh, I've got a lovely manky baker's brush here. Look at that. So if I add a bit more white and ochre and a little bit of cerulean, I know that might sound a little bit weird. But it's evening sand. Oh, I might add a tiny bit of cad red in there as well. Oh, it might be a bit too much cad red. And then I'm just going to stipple. So this is more of a dry brush method. 
you know, I might send this to the couple at Lorraine Lodge. They were so nice. I'm going back. I've booked again to go back there next year. So I'm just a, an advanced warning. What, what, do you know what? I might wing it so I could do an early morning live session. What do you think? Because I actually have better signal down there than I do where I live. Right, maybe I need a bit more white. Oh, sorry to see that, um, Roger. Um, one thing I can recommend is um, pencil grips and paintbrush grips. Um, they're rubber, chunky things that slide onto pencils to help with the grip. They work perfectly for paintbrushes. Oh, I've got a customer. Now, where have I put my little sign? Right, be back in a second. I'll be as quick as I can. I'm back. I'm back. 
Yeah, try it with those. I haven't got any. Normally we sell them. I haven't got any in stock. I had to look while I was there. But um, yeah, they're finger grips. And they're quite good for sliding over pencils. And um, paint brushes. Right, so I need to paint some stones. And... I'll try and find a flat brush so I can show you how to do stone. Actually, a filbert would be better. Oh, there's a filbert. Right, what I want to do is bring my <laughs> sliced up um, sliced up tile here. So if I've got I've got ochre, bit of burnt sienna, little bit of maybe a little bit of black. So I want I'm going to make quite a pile of this. This is the dark side of the stones. Maybe I'll throw in a bit of cerulean. Right, so that's my shaded bit of the stone. And then I'm going to basically add a bit more white and ochre. Now this takes practice and I may make it look easier than it is. So you basically want two contrasting colours. I think I need it even whiter than that. So just squeeze a bit more white out. I was very stingy with my paints. Because I know I never use much. But on this one, I was stingy with the white. Now I'm aware we've got 15 minutes left. Maybe a bit more ochre in that. Right, so I've got two piles of colour here. And what I want to do, because a filbert brush is a flat brush with a curved top, is I'm going to stroke the brush in my light colour, flip it over, and stroke the other side in my dark colour so I've got one side dark one side light and then need a bit more dark I think look at that The key to this is basically varying the size of your pebbles. <laughs> now Trish, if you're still with us watching, you'll know we've done this quite a lot over the years. It's very effective, but you really do have to keep reloading your brush but you can get, it's it's the fastest and most effective way. Now, I can't pretend I invented this method. I first saw this when I was 14 years old in oil painting by the late, great, amazingly fantastic Bob Ross. Um, and I worked out how to adapt it to acrylic painting. How amazing is it? If you just quickly dab while you've got your darks and your lights. The thing, ah, right, so the thing you've got to remember most is which side your dark's on and which side your light's on because if you keep changing it, your brush is going to get really filthy and it won't work. I 
I might do some black and white versions of that for a minute just to get some grey so I need to make a pale grey so we've got a big lump of black there and then I'll pull some of that out add white you need a lot of paint because it's the contrast that's important and you keep going in and out of it so um, and what it does is it kind of blends together and if you don't want such a huge contrast then you can just tone down your lighter colours I love it. It's, it's. I think it's kind of um, uh, uh, an adapt adaptation from Chinese brush painting. It's called double loading. You can do a double loaded brush to create some amazing flowers and petals and things. I might do some larger ones now actually. Because um, I've got really small pebbles here. The bigger the brush, the, the larger the stone Right, so now I'm going to attempt to use a gel pen. Right, fingers crossed that um, it's all dry. Right, you'll see what I mean in a second about counter change. Because you can see here that the, the mast goes through the green, but actually we lose it in the sky. And we don't want to lose it in the sky. makes a massive difference when there's some lighter tones going on in a picture I think I might add a bit of black in there there are I mean there are a huge amount of boats in this harbour and I'm only putting a few in No, you see, this is, this is, I think I need to put a bit of beach back in there. So I've got a few lines there that I'm then have to turn with a black, a really fine black pen. I don't know if that's going to be fine. Let me find a ruler if I don't really fancy my chances.
So I don't know if you can see how counter change works. I told you this is what happens on Melina. I'm going to put a red boy. It's lovely. You're so quiet and well behaved. You're the best, you're the best class. You really are. Just a few minutes to go. Blimey. Thank you so much for your company today, by the way. I do appreciate it. I love. I mean, this is my job. I know it's my job, but I do. Um, oh, is that gone clogged? Have I clogged it up? No, it's just not. Um, I have, as always, had an absolute blast with you. Maybe I need to add just a bit more sand, some pale sand back on my beach so if I do a bit of ochre a bit of red and a bit of white I'm going to add a tiny bit of cerulean not to the point where it goes green but it's a funny colour because of it being an evening something like that I can just sort of Place some of it in between. Get rid of some of the stones because I was getting a bit excitable and carried away because they're so fun to do. So if you have um, been painting along, well, well done to you, regardless of how it looks. Well done for sticking it. 
and um, sticking to it and, and painting along with me because I know I can be fast um, especially when there's a lot to do in a small amount of time so you should give yourself a really good pat on the back And for those of you that are joining on catch up, watching this la later, maybe later this week, later today, later this year, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. And um, no matter when it is, do just send us an email or a Facebook message or a Instagram message or a tweet or a TikTok, whatever, whatever you're on. Um, we're on them all. I love to see what you've done I really do so this is what I've created in an hour and a half um, would I change things possibly I'd probably do more with the foreground um, but with the time that we've got I do want to try and stick exactly to the hour and a half which we are just coming up to um, obviously that doesn't include the drawing time because I did draw it in advance um, but I've really enjoyed this it's my favorite place um, do you know what, Trish? It's one of the cleanest beaches I know. Um, everybody respects Barmouth so much. I mean, it is nicknamed Birmingham on Sea because it's the direct way anybody from the Black Country in Birmingham, it's the, it's the closest coast. Um, and a lot of people from the West Midlands area retire here or set up business here. Um, but there's a proudness to Barmouth that I can't explain. And it's really clean i have never seen any dog mess i've never seen any litter um the beaches are so clean <coughs> and soft sands you know, it's, it's beautiful occasionally there might be the odd bit left over uh if somebody's had a beach barbecue or something but generally nothing at all these are unedited photographs so um well thank you sharon thank you roger thank you mandy um i've had a wonderful time and i'm glad you have too um, I'll take a photograph of this and post it um, on the shop social media pages in a minute and then you can post underneath when you've added yours. So thank you so much. Have a really good weekend, whatever you're up to. Uh, we've got one more week left of July and then we're into August and the summer holidays. But um, don't forget, end of August, I've lost my booklet. Hang on a minute before you clear off. 6th of August is a watercolour demo, 11 o'clock on here. Painting Shadows, Sea and Beach View in Watercolours. And then the Saturday the 27th of August is a free paint along watercolour class like this. Same time, same place um, on the 27th of August. And it's a poppy field in watercolour. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend, whatever you get up to. And um, I'll see you all very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.